Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing work on our custom ice cream truck project. In the last episode, you saw me finish up the exterior of the box, but we haven't gotten to work on the interior yet, and that is exactly what we are going to do in this episode. Let me catch you up to speed. So far, I have installed our insulation on our back wall as well as on the ceiling. We also have six electrical boxes up there for our LED lights. The next step is going to be getting the ceiling tiles installed. And for that, let me show you what we're going with. It's basically the same tile that we went with on our pizza truck project, just a slightly different color. Instead of being a bronze color, we're going with a more silver look here. These are 24 by 24, which is the exact distance that I installed the spars. So the insulation should be pretty simple. I will be using rivets just to make everything nice and clean. So let's jump right in. All right, we've got our back wall all set up in the paint booth here and we are ready to get started on the paint. Now this paint job is actually temporary. The company that commissioned this build is having a local artist come out and do custom graphics on not only this back wall, but also the entire exterior of the box that is currently that gray color. So in the meantime, we just needed something that was ice cream related to get the truck through its first month or so out there in the field. So I decided to use some spray paint to make a bunch of different random colored sprinkles. And then on top of that, I did seafoam green, white, and pink. And then I added some random colors kind of here and there, nothing too fancy, but this isn't you know a big deal it just kind of needed to look ice creamy so my wife made a stencil for me that was an ice cream cone with a nice little two scoops on it so I put those in some random places and then when I was all done with that I just peeled off the little pieces of tape that I had previously put on the spray paint to expose those sprinkles
All right, guys, the electrical system on the truck is up and running. Let me show you what we're going with. What we've got here for a power unit is the Delta Pro made by a company called EcoFlow along with an extra battery. The Delta Pro has a 3600 watt hour battery built in. The external battery is the same 3600. So you've got 7200 watt hours between the two of them. We do have this large cable right here that connects the two. And then the Delta Pro itself is the inverter along with the batteries. So you've got the charging ports right here it can be charged through a regular household outlet that is this right here it can also be charged with a solar charger or a car input the car input is a regular cigarette lighter right here so what I did this little blue wire down here this is the power from the truck that used to go to the trailer wiring so if you have a seven pin connector one of them is constant power supply when the ignition is on that is this right here I'm going to put a small cigarette lighter down here so that I can run the cable up what that means is when we're driving down the road we will have the cigarette lighter charging this up because when we have all of these fridges and freezers filled up with supplies, they will need to stay nice and cold. So this will be running when it is at the facility, but it will be running off of this. This is our RV style plug, which goes to this dog bone, which then goes to this regular 15 amp outlet. That way it can be plugged in so that the fridges and freezers will stay nice and cold when it's parked. And then when you're getting ready to go, you unhook the umbilical cord, plug in the RV connector right here to the echo flow. That goes to our little electrical box right here, which then sends the power through GFCIs to our sink, fridges, and freezers. So there are actually a ton of companies right now that are making portable battery stations. So when I was trying to decide which one to go with, I started off by looking at the total power consumption for everything. So if everything's running at the same time, fridges, freezers, sinks, all of that, how much power is going to be consumed. And then I looked at how much power capacity it would take to make everything run for at least six hours because we figured that's the longest amount of time that this thing will probably be out in the field. I also wanted something that had Bluetooth capabilities and an app so that you could monitor and control everything from your phone. And then I wanted something that was expandable so if any of the calculations were off or if the truck is out in service longer than expected or if they add something that is super power hungry like uh, blenders or something like that, then you can always add on extra battery packs in the future so after going through all of that that's how I ended up with the echo flow let me show you guys how everything works on the app because I've only played with this thing a little bit so far but I am absolutely thrilled with how well it's working so let me show you all right so here's our little app you can see we are at 48 hours right now available on its current consumption we're at 64 percent on the Delta Pro and 69 percent on our external battery we are currently using an output of 73 watts that is just for the lights I can click this little switch here that turns off our AC power and then you can turn it right back on. So the next thing I'd like to do is get both of these battery stations charged up to full capacity and then I will turn on every single piece of equipment and we will see how it does under full load and then we'll see how long it takes to drain completely. Now it's going to be a little bit difficult because fridges and freezers, they don't run all the time. From my previous testing, I found that my fridge is only running between 10 and 20% of the time. It cycles on and off, you know, as soon as the temperature's down, it turns off, as soon as the temperature goes up, it turns back on. So the the full load of turning everything on to get it to cool down is going to be much higher than the load required to keep it cool. But it's also going to change as people are, you know, opening up and closing and opening and closing every time you do that, as I'm sure your parents taught you, it ends up using more electricity. So first things first, let's get this thing full and then we'll start to put it through its paces and just kind of see what the tests show. All right, we've got everything running right now except for our sink, our water heater, and then the scooper heater because I need to get some water in there before I turn it on. I filled this up with a little bit of water. You can see some splashes down there, but I need to get a little bit more because it still has some air bubbles in it. So we are running at, right now, 1113 watts that's our total output it is showing five hours on this one and seven hours on that i think it is going to be in between the two because obviously we are pulling you see 470 is the output on that one 470 almost is the input so we are pulling almost 500 watts from there which is a little bit less than half which is why that one shows seven hours so i think you split the difference between the two we would have six hours of runtime if everything is on at the same time remember 
forever because these are fridges and freezers. Once they get down to temperature, they will start to cycle on and off. So I will keep these on and then uh, I'll show you that once they start cycling on and off, we'll see what our wattage is. I know that this little heater for our scoopers can take up to 500 watts. Again, it will cycle on and off once it gets up to that temperature. So that is obviously super power hungry. And then our water heater takes a lot. The water pump takes almost nothing, but the water heater takes a lot. So let's go ahead and get the water tank filled up so that we can really put this thing to work and see what it's looking like when the water heater's on, the sink's running, and our scooper's going. All right, we have got every fridge and freezer down to their operating temperature, so they are currently cycling on and off, so they're not consuming a ton of power. I do have our scooper heater going. That thing is pulling a decent amount. We are at 789 watts total, but you'll see a majority of that is from this little heater. So we'll watch that. Yep, 790 down to 385. So about 400 watts on the scooper heater, which is, gosh, that's more than keeping every single fridge and freezer going at the same time. Our water heater is the same issue. It's currently off right now because it is up to its operating temperature. But when I turn it on and the heating element is going, it pulls like 1500 watts on top of everything else. So that drops our time dramatically. But as of right now, we are showing, geez, 15 hours and 47 minutes. Let's turn this back on though, because that is going to be operating most of the time. And then it drops down to a more realistic seven hours and 31 minutes. Absolutely fantastic news. Let's continue on with the test for another hour or so and just see if everything stays where it's at. Guys, I was doing some testing with my new favorite tool, my thermal camera here, just to see if all of the freezers are getting to temperature. And then I was looking, look at this. <laughs> you can see how hot our little, uh, dipper heater is and then I'm checking inside to make sure all the temperatures are nice and chilly exactly where everything should be check this out a little echo flow you can see the heat that's generating you can see where the heat is on the battery and then you can see more heat on the inverter and battery but everything is looking fantastic all right it has been a little over two hours let's see where we are at Right now we are at 76% on the main unit and then 81% on our battery backup. We've got six hours here, eight hours there, so seven hours I imagine between the two. I'm going to go ahead and cut this test short because we are having an ice cream social this Saturday where we'll have our neighbors and friends and family over here and I'll actually be serving them ice cream so we will get a better idea of how everything is going to work when we actually have some product in these fridges and freezers. So let's get back to work. Up next are a set of custom stainless steel countertops. The first one goes directly above the battery packs. The next one goes right next to our display freezer. They need to be stainless steel just because they will be in contact with food and that is what the code people want. So that's the way we're making it. Stainless steel can be a little bit of a pain to work with. Uh, you can't weld it the same way. I mean, you can, but you'll end up with little rust spots all over. So I will head over to my buddy Gavin's shop in a bit to get his help TIG welding it because I can TIG weld, but not very good on very very thin stuff like this. So it's just a basic simple metal frame and then I'm drilling a couple holes here just so that it can mount to the back wall and then use those two legs in the front. Here's Gavin doing his little magic with his TIG welder and this is how they turned out. Pretty good I think. All right guys, I have been working like crazy to have this truck done. It is Friday, we have to be on the road on Monday, so that gives me today, Saturday, and Sunday. And then Saturday, we've got our little ice cream social. So I'm losing about half a day there, so we've got half of Saturday, all of Sunday, and then today. Let me catch up to speed on where we're at. Right now, I am working on our air conditioning system, so you can see I've got some of the parts laid out here, specifically our wiring diagram, and that is because I spent all of yesterday getting everything mounted on the vehicle side. So you see we've got our dryer up there, all of the lines, hoses, everything is all connected. We've got our compressor all hooked up. I need to pressure test our cooling system to make sure that there are no leaks, and then I'm going to vacuum test our air conditioning system, again, just to make sure that we don't have any leaks. So here's what it is looking like inside. I do need a latch for our glove box that is hanging down at the moment. 
Here's the Vintage Air Slimline kit. It's a good looking kit. Normally it would be installed in the middle, but because of our giant doghouse, I had to move it over to the side. Right now I'm working on all of the wiring and the vacuum lines. I do have our backup camera hooked up. I've got the wiring that runs over to the back. I need to route one underneath here where we've got our electrical box. So I will find some wire that is positively charged when the key is in the on position so that it will automatically turn on the backup camera. And then I've got to route this back up and over so that we can mount the camera on the back side. As far as the inside of this, everything is pretty much done. I just need to mount a fire extinguisher and then I do need to make some kind of a cover there for our battery kit. But uh, yeah, things are moving and shaking. So let's get back to work. All right, I'm charging up my AC at the moment and it's kind of cool. You can watch the numbers just drop. This is my little scale here. So I can make sure that I'm putting the exact amount of R134A into the system. Let's see if it's blowing cold yet. Oh yeah, starting to get a little chilly. Ah, we're getting there. All right guys, check out how cold our AC box is compared to the rest of the cab. Pretty cool. All right, we've only got two things left to do. First, make this little cover for our battery pack, and then I've got to paint the last couple of pieces that I forgot to paint when I was painting everything else. The ashtray, and then these four pieces here are for the doors. They cover up the hinges on the back. All right guys, so the party was a huge success. There were numerous health code violations. I had a bunch of kids inside helping me serve ice cream. It was a little bit chaotic at times, but everybody had a great time. I wanted to show you how well everything is holding up inside. So on our Delta Pro here, we are showing five hours on the main one and six hours on the extra battery. So I think you split the difference between the two. We're at five and a half hours of energy that we still have on board, and that is with everything running. So I could not be happier with our electrical output. Basically, this thing's done. All right, guys, the truck is finally done. It has been a very long six months. I ended up putting in 736 hours of labor into this project. I leave for Chicago first thing in the morning. Let's take one last look around before I hit the road. Starting off on the front end here, we have what the internet seems to think is the world's ugliest bumper. I never really did explain why I went with this style. You see the frame rail of the 09 sits about 8 inches lower than the 58 frame did. So I tried mounting a factory looking bumper to that frame. It looked absolutely horrible. I tried seeing if I could mount it higher, but then the frame was sticking out. It looked awful. So I came up with this solution. In person, everyone seems to like it, but the internet disagrees. The paint job, I think, came out fantastic. Let me show you the interior here. I think our junkyard seats are looking pretty sharp. I'm very happy we were able to keep the cup holder here that mounts to the doghouse. I did have to shave the bottom of the doghouse just a little bit so that it would tilt down so that I could fit our slimline vintage air kit. This thing's been working fantastic. It's keeping it nice and cold. Let's take a look at the driver's side over here. We did replace all of the weather stripping so all of the glass is nice and cleaned and sealed properly for our window crank. Check this out. Nice and smooth. 
very happy with that. So we've got our modern gauges there and the message center on that still works. So you've got the headlight switch and then the controller right here. So you can cycle through the trip odometer, the regular odometer. You can check your fuel mileage. You can see how many miles you've got till empty. All that stuff still works. So very cool. This is what the box looks like from this side. Pretty simple. Kind of looks like an old uh, one of those kind of dump trucks. On the back here, of course, we still have our school bus taillights. Let's take a look inside. We have the ceiling tiles from American Ceiling Tile along with the LED lights. We've got outlets galore. We've got outlets on the side of the Echo Flow Delta Pros. We've got outlets there. We've got outlets underneath here for our sink, for the water heater, for our freezer, for our freezer, for our freezer, for our fridge. All kinds of power all over the place. We've got our custom display case. It is custom because I had to build the entire bottom section from scratch in order to mount the compressor higher and off to the side so that I could fit it over the wheel well. For the floor, we've got our 14 gauge diamond plate that has been bedlined. We've got our 10 foot roll up door. And then on the outside, we've got our 13 foot awning. So here you have it, totally complete. Now let's get this door closed, locked up. We'll get the lights off and we'll get this thing on the road. Alright, so we made it to Illinois in one piece. Here I am cleaning up the truck and getting it ready for the first event, which was a food truck festival in Naperville just outside of Chicago. I'm parked alongside the very first pizza truck that I ever made. That was about four and a half years ago, and that just so happened to be the truck that was heading out to the event with us. So this is Pablo showing me how to make a pizza. I got to make the very first one of the day, which was exciting for me. I've never actually made a pizza on this truck. So I think I went with roast beef and jardinier. It was delicious. The event went off without a hitch. I think they served over 900 scoops out of that truck. Ah, uh, guys, we did it. We made it all the way to the end of this project. Thanks for sticking with me. The next episode is going to be the complete time lapse of this build. There is some footage that didn't make it into the individual episodes that I'll be able to put in there, as well as footage of what it looks like now because they were able to get that local artist to completely repaint the box and it looks fan freaking tastic. If you want to rent this truck out, I will put a link in the description below to where you can find it in the greater Chicago land area. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye bye.